Hello, it's John here from 852 Tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating traffic lights. Yes, the very exciting traffic lights. So, I've quickly modeled up a mesh of traffic lights. Like I said, it's so relatively quickly, but you know, it's okay. It'll do the job. So, I'm going to import those in my scene and I'll make this available to you guys. In fact, let me just delete that. I'm going wrong already. I'm going to create a new blueprint. But yeah, I'll make those traffic lights available to you guys. Probably put like a link in the description or something. Um, traffic light BP. Cool. So I'm just creating a blueprint. I'm actually going to put it all in this blueprint. Gonna try my static machine there first and foremost. And oops. Rotate that into position. Get it looking all fine and dandy. Maybe scale it up a little bit too. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so that's the first part. While I'm in here real quick. I just want to note that I have set this up with a bunch of different elements, with four different elements. Element zero, this can be, I would just go for like any kind of maybe like copper metal or something, because that's just that. What we actually want to do is set up the lights, and that's all these ones here. But before we get into those a bit more, we're going to need to tweak those. So, um, let's have a look at this one. Cylinder 001 mat, which has come from over here. Open you up. And this is going to be, should be a relatively short and sweet setup. Let's set you to red. Let's assume that you had a red light. We're not going to go into the base, we're actually going to go into the emissive, but we need to be able to control the power. That these are going to be coming out at. So I'm going to add a multiply and I'm going to add a, oops, if I can type, a scalar parameter. And I'm going to call this, um, oops, I'm not typing, ah, I'm going to call this red. Red over here. And by default, red, you should be, let's just say, 20. Set you over here to a missive color. And save. So we're going to need to do the same process for the next ones, but for amber and green. Which I'll just speedily do. Okay, so we have set up our colours real quick. I had to go through and make a few tweaks just because I wanted to get the balance right. Now, we're going to go back into the blueprint. So, as you can see, 
these have already started to take effect. They are upside down and in the wrong order, which is really annoying. But, okay, I can figure this out. And my orange and my green look very similar. That's annoying. I'm going to have to... Oh, right. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Will it be fine? Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, so red is one. So that is this one. Cylinder mat one. Nope. Uh, uh, uh. What are you doing to me? Cylinder mat one, red, cool. So that's the top one, meaning this one wants to be mat two. Zero two. Oh my god. So that's zero zero three. Okay. Finally making this one zero zero two. That is some bad ordering there, John. Excellent. Okay, so we now have the colours set up and our traffic light is more or less good to go. So I'm just going to drop it in the editor, see how that looks. Well, it looks rubbish because it's tiny and facing the wrong way. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Alright, and now I'm going to show you <clears throat> the reason we put this on a blueprint in the first place. It's because we are going to want to play with these. Oh my god, I forgot a step. That's so annoying. What I need to do is actually make an instance of all of these. So I'm just going to call this red instance. I'm going to call this one amber instance. And then I'm going to call this one green instance. Excellent, excellent. And the reason I have done that is because what we want to do is make sure the scalar parameter is on. So now that's set to 8 by default, but I can change the sort of how bright it is. That's like how dull it is. And that's you know, how we're going to activate the sub on and off. So we need to go through and just make sure each one of those is ticked. So find your instances, make sure they're ticked, and then in your blueprint, let's change these over for the instances. So it's going to be red instance, green instance, and amber instance. Excellent. All right, now we're good. So I'm going to go into my event graph, give myself a bit of space over here, and I'm going to right-click and create a new timeline. You see the one we've got, add timeline? That's the one we want. Cool. So in the timeline, that's just going to be an event play. I'm going to double-click it to open up the timeline up. The first one, let's set this to red. And let's say we want this to happen over th a three second period. The whole thing is going to take place over three seconds. So red, hold shift, create a point. So red, you go up to about here for a second. In fact, 
let's turn you on to about there. Because red and amber are on at the same time for a short amount of time, at least here in the UK anyway. Cool, and then at three seconds, create the endpoint, and that's also going to be the loop and use that keyframe. And that's good. Let's do the same now for Amber. So, same thing. Zero, and then at one, this is where we want it to turn on. And you're going to be on screen till about two. And you're going to have a last keyframe that's going to be used. And then finally, green. And you know the process. Wait till two seconds. When two seconds on, make green all powerful. So about three seconds. And then bring it back down again. Awesome. Gonna compile that, save that, go back to my event graph, and now you see we have these tracks. Red for some reason didn't rename. But you know what? I'm going to get over that. So what we need now is to set our scalar parameters. So I'm just put in this one for our Brit lights, which are British traffic lights, I guess, silly naming convention. And let's set this one up to red. So red's going to happen first. But before we do it then, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to increase the number. So we're going to just have a quick float by flow. And let's say 800. And in the red, we need to quickly find out what I called it. I just call it red. So let me explain real quick why I just why I added these times. Because on the timeline, if I scroll up to red anyway, you see the number is only going to actually go between this zero and one value. So I'm just going to increase that number exponentially. And let's go back to event graph. And make sure you get rid of that last E. Oh my god. Set again, set scalar parameter. This one's gonna be for orange. Why are you up over there? What did I call amber? I called it amber. I think I see where I was going with this. And we're gonna need a float by float. Alright, so let's find Amber. Pull you over there, this is getting a bit messy. Pull you over there, like so. Times you by. Again, let's just try 800. And we can tweak and change these as we go in. Don't forget to wire your updates it up. And one more time. Set scalar parameter. Let's just double check just to make sure there's green, green, get another float. What I should have done is made use of my shortcuts, control W to duplicate. That would probably save me a bit of time. Oh, I don't need that one. So if I select this, control W. Wire green up all the way over yonder. You go over here. Then, in theory, and I know theory never works out, but in theory, this should work now. So if I press simulate, hey, it's working. Totally need to adjust those values. Because the reds 
getting too washed out. Like it's orange and amber and green are way too powerful. So to do that, it's just going to be a case of if we go back into here, I would personally it's probably easy to tweak these. So what did I say? Red needs to be more powerful. So I'm going to set you to 900. Amber needs to be considerably less powerful. And as does green. And then again, if you're not happy with the sort of timings on these things, then tweak it over here. So instead of having that go from half to one, yeah, and actually, instead of having this red go over there, I'm just going to have it sort of turn taken. And if you want to make sure you've got a little bit of something throughout, just sort of set those up as well. A little bit sort of start with a bit of a missive there with some, so it's not a complete flat zero. Right, compile, save everything, you get out of the way, and voila. Mm -hmm. I think throughout that green is just too powerful before the light turns on, turns on. And that probably still needs tweaking. But you know what? I'm just being picky now. I'm just being picky. Ultimately, at that point, you know the skills. You know how to go about doing that. Oops. Oh. Weird. Um, yeah, like I say, you know the skills. You know how to go about doing that. So it's just tweak the timeline. Keep changing that until you get it right. But ultimately, I'm happy with that. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and you found it useful. If you have, as always, you know, feel free to support us on Patreon. We've got a website. Go across there, check it out, and thank you for watching.